So this is section 12.2. We are beginning on page 802. Sequences and series. And we're actually going to be talking about arithmetic. Sequences and series. Okay, there are different types of sequences and series. The one we're concerned about in this section are strictly the arithmetic ones. The next section will be dealing with the geometric sequences and series. And then we'll move on to infinite geometric sequences and series. Understand that in general, most Sequences in series are neither arithmetic nor geometric. These are very, very special sequences in series. So let's start by talking about the difference between a sequence and a series, and then we'll talk about what arithmetic refers to. A sequence is something you guys have worked with many times before. You might have something like this. And they might ask you, what's the rule? What about three? Yeah, you're adding three each time to get the next term, right? That's an example of a sequence. And then they might ask you to fill in the next three numbers, the next three terms. So what are the next three terms going to be? 16, 19, 22, right? Okay. So that's a sequence. This is our first term. the 1, and we give that a symbol A sub 1. Notice the 1 is not an exponent. It's a subscript. That means the first term. Okay? The next one is the second term. We call that A sub 2. Then A sub 3, A sub 4, and A sub 5. So whenever you see an A sub some number, that number is telling you what term it is in the sequence. <coughs> Everybody got that? Okay. What a series is, is this. Looks the same, right? But it's not. The difference between a sequence and a, a, sequence and a series is that in a series, We're not separating them with commas. We're separating them with pluses, or we could be separating them with minuses. Remember, subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite, right? Right? So 5 minus 2 is really 5 plus negative 2. You can write it either way. So a series is really referring to a summation process where we're adding things together. That's the difference. So you can have a sequence and a series that are identical. It just means that one is separated by commas. One is being added together. Any questions about that? That's all there is for the difference between sequences and series. All right. What it means to be arithmetic is that we always add the same number each time to get the next term. What did we say we were adding each time on our example? Three. So when we go from one <coughs> to four to seven to ten to thirteen, regardless of whether I'm adding or putting commas in there, I'm adding three each time. Am I ever not adding 3? Am I ever adding something else or doing something else to it? No. Since we're adding 3 each time, this is an arithmetic sequence. That same number that we add each time is called the common difference. And we label it lowercase d. So what is our D here? What are we adding each time? Three. 
What if we were subtracting 3 each time? What would our D be? Negative 3. So you have to think of it in terms of adding. If you're subtracting 3 each time, that means you're really adding negative 3. Okay, so D would be negative 3 if you're going down. And the way that you find D is D is always equal to any term minus the previous term. So 13 minus 10 is 3, 7 minus 4 is 3, 4 minus 1 is 3. Okay, any term minus the previous term will tell you the common difference. Why do we subtract? Because we're going backwards. If going left to right, I add each time, then going from right to left, right, any term and then its previous term, I have to subtract going backwards. So that's why it's called the common difference. Difference means what? Subtraction. Okay, any questions on the basics of that? Now, what if you're adding each time, but you're not adding the same number? Is that arithmetic? No. no. So if you're adding 1 the first time, and then 2 the second time, and then 3 the third time, etc., yes, you are adding. Maybe we could come up with a rule for that sequence or that series, but it's not called arithmetic because we're not adding the same exact number every single time. It has to be the same number if it's going to be arithmetic. All right, any questions on any of that? Okay, so what if we have our same 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, dot, dot, dot. What does the dot, dot, dot mean? It goes on forever, right? So this is an infinite arithmetic sequence. Infinite arithmetic sequence. One of the things they may ask us to do is they may ask us to write the rule for the nth term. And there's a formula for doing this. The nth term would be a sub what? n. Remember, the number is what term it is. So it's the nth term, it's a sub n. That's our generic nth term, whatever term we're looking for. And I'll give you examples in just a minute. It turns out that that's equal to the first term, a sub 1, plus the number of the term you're looking for, minus 1 times d, your common difference. So this is the first of five formulas you must memorize in this chapter. Okay? This is the first of five you have to memorize. A sub n equals a1 plus n minus 1 times d. How does it work? Well, let's take a look. So the nth term is equal to the first term, which is what? What's our a1 here? 1 plus n minus 1 times our d, what did we say d was here? 3. This is the rule for the nth term. Now we just have to simplify. Distribute the 3, and so you get a n is equal to 1 plus 3 n minus 3, which simplifies down to what? 3 n minus 2. This is the rule for the nth term. In other words, if we want the 27th term, we plug in 27 for n. If we want the 10th term, we plug in 10 for n. So let's do that. a sub 10 would then be equal to, notice I'm making the n into 10, so this would be equal to 3 times 10 minus 2. 30 minus 2 is 28. So the 10th term would be 28. Now, couldn't we just keep adding 3 each time and do 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22, 25, 28 and get the 10th term that way? Sure. But what happens if they ask you for a sub 3,097? Do you really want to keep adding 3s almost 4 or almost 3,100 times? No. But what's nice about this is all we have to do is plug in 3,097 for n. So it's what, 9270, 92, 91, minus 2, 9289, is that right? Somebody check that for me on the calculator. Just make sure I did the math right in my head. Yes, sir. 
3 and the negative 2? It is times D. Because we're using this formula. We're using the simplified version of the formula. Yeah, you don't have to redo the same work. Yeah. Was it not right? That's good? Okay, thank you. Okay, questions about that, folks? Everybody's good on that? So that's finding the rule for the nth term. Now, if they give you the rule, then it's very easy to find whatever term they want. You just plug in whatever they want you to find. But usually they're going to ask you to find the rule. All right. Now, one thing that they do sometimes, though, is they do things like this. They could tell you that A sub 19 is equal to 48 and D is equal to 3 and they want you to write the rule. So last time we knew the first term in D. This time we don't. We know another term in D. So first thing you do is you start with the same equation. A n equals A 1 plus n minus 1 times D. We need to replace these two things in our equation and then simplify, right? Just like we did on the last one. So the first thing you do is we know D. We can plug that in. So this is A n equals A 1 plus n minus 1 times 3. Problem is we don't know what A 1 is. But we do know another term. What term do we know? Which one? No, we don't know A n. We know A 19, right? We know the 19th term is equal to what? 48. So if I make N equal to 19, do you see that this is what I get? A 19 is equal to A 1 plus 19 minus 1 times 3. You see that? I just plugged 19 in for n. Why 19? Because I'm using the piece of information they gave me. That's our n. So those of you that said we know a n, if that's what you meant, then yes, you're correct. We know it for one particular term. Now, what do we know this guy is really equal to? 48. So 48 is equal to a 1 plus 18 times 3 is what? 30 and 24, 54? Do you see that we can now solve this for A1? Subtract 54 from both sides and you get A1 is equal to negative 6. So now we know D is equal to 3. We know A1 is equal to negative 6. Do you see that now this becomes just like the last problem? AN is equal to A1 plus N minus 1 times D. Now I replace the two things I need to replace. Now I just have to simplify. So the rule is that AN equals negative 6 plus 3N minus 3, which gives us AN is equal to 3N minus 9. There's the rule for our nth term. So sometimes they give you D and they give you one term. You can find what you're missing this way by plugging that one term in. Questions about that? Okay, the next example I want to do for you is what happens if they don't tell us D? What happens if they just tell us that A sub 8 is equal to 21? And A sub 27 is equal to 97. So we don't know A1 and we don't know D. But here's the thing, guys. We can find D very easily. So here's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth term. 21, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Now I'm just writing these all out just to demonstrate for you what we're doing. But you don't have to write these all out. I just want you to watch that part. I mean, you can put it in your notes, but you're not going to actually do it on the problems. What do we add each time to get from one term to the next? We don't know. We don't know. What do we call it, though? 
D, right? We call it D, the common difference. So to get from here to here, I have to add D. And then to get from here to the next one, what do I add? D. And I keep doing that over and over and over. The question is, how many steps do I have to take to get from the eighth term to the 27th term? 19 steps. Do you guys see that? Did I have to write these all out and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19? Did we have to really do that? How could we have done that just by looking at the numbers? 27 minus 8, right? To get from the 8th term to the 27th term must be 19 steps because 27 minus 8 is 19. How much are we adding on each of those steps? D. We're adding D. So 19 steps of adding D makes 19 times D altogether. Do you guys see that? We have 19 Ds that are being added together. Does everybody follow that? So does everybody agree that altogether we're going to add 19 times whatever D is to get those 19 steps across? Now, the question is, what do we add all together to get from 21 to 97? 76. Everybody see that? 21 plus 76 is 97. So this is what we added. And that ended up being 96, or 76. That means that 19D is really equal to 76. So we figure out how many Ds we're adding. We figure out what we're adding total, and we set those two things equal to each other. Does everybody see how that works? If 19D equals 76, then D is equal to 76 over 19, which is what? 4. Now we know that D is equal to 4. So now I'm going to get rid of this. Now I can add this to my information. Do you see that if I have this, and I have either one of these, it doesn't matter which one, so I'm going to pick the one with smaller numbers. Do you see that that's the same as the last example that we did? We know D and we know one term. So now we're going to do this exactly the same way we did those other ones. So we know that AN is equal to A1 plus N minus 1 times D. We don't know A1, but we can use what to find it? A8. We know A8 is equal to the first term plus 8 minus 1 times Z. But we know that A8 is really what number? So 21 is equal to A1 plus 7 times 4 is 28, which makes A1 equal to negative 7. And so our equation then is An is equal to the first term plus N minus 1 times Z. Now all we have to do is what? What do we do? Simplify. So negative 7 plus 4n minus 4, which gives us an is equal to 4 times n minus 11. That's the rule. How can I check it? Plug in 8 and see if it gives you 21. 32 minus 11 is 21. It works. Plug in 27. 4 times 27 is 108 minus 11 is 97. It works. We can check it against the two terms they gave us to make sure they work. Questions about any of that? So this is the basics of working with sequences, arithmetic sequences. This formula only works when you're dealing with arithmetic sequences, by the way. All right, questions about that? All right, let me give you guys some problems to play with then. <coughs> 